Um, I've got on my agenda location uh, of the um, toilets, but nobody's actually told me where they are. I assume they're, all signed, outside. they're signed outside. Okay, there's two of them I'm being told outside, outside of the room. And in the event of fire, uh, museum staff will tell us to exit the building. Uh, obviously, there's that way and there's that way. So thank you. And it's very good for us today to be here in the Jewish Museum. Coming on to the uh, minutes of the 27th of April, I've had notice from Rick Cooper that he's got a comment on those minutes and the previous minutes. So Rick, I'm sorry I can't listen or we can't listen to the recording uh, today, but what we'll do is um, we'll go back and we'll listen to the recording and send out revised uh, minutes. I take it that nobody else has got any other comments. Okay, if you want to let us know, that's absolutely fine. If you could let us know as soon as possible so that we could finalise the minutes. Okay, thank you. Subject to comment from Francis and subject to, to reviewing uh, Rick. Thank you very, very much. Can I say it's my absolute pleasure now to be able to welcome Joel Rosen, President of UJS. He's been absolutely incredible, really collegiate, wonderful to work with. And I'm very much looking forward uh, to hearing, hearing you speak. And I'm told that you're going to speak for five minutes and you're prepared to have questions also for another, another five minutes. So many thanks indeed. Um, are we still having a clock? I guess I will uh, look on, on my screen. Uh, if not, we'll keep an eye on the five minutes and I'll let you know. Thank you, the floor is yours. No, it's not working. It will in a minute, I'm sure. I've, oh, perfect. Hello. <laughs> Shavuot of deputies, lovely to be here. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to address you. I want to start with a story. I've lost this. Uh, it's a story that began over a century ago, and it's a story that this year I've told wherever I've travelled. Uh, it's got an eclectic cast of characters who have more in common with each other than they'd readily admit. And it's a story set in dusty pews of old remote synagogues and on astroturf pitches across the country in cafes, bars, clubs, pubs and student unions. It's a story of Jewish student life in the UK and Ireland. And it's the story that I've been blessed to tell this past year. This morning, um, I followed what this year has become my um, Sunday morning routine and returned from campus, uh, having spent Shabbat with one of our 75 uh, university Jewish societies. I find these trips incredibly energizing and refreshing and across the country a generation, a new generation is breathing fresh energy and ideas into our community. Deputies, we have so much to be proud of. Uh, I'm incredibly proud that in this year, in spite of all of the odds, uh, we, we held true to a saying coined by my predecessor, the late uh, great Alan Senate of blessed memory more Jewish students doing more Jewish things. And that's become the mantra of our movement. This year, we've delivered thousands more Friday night dinners and engaged in social action and interfaith projects across the country. We've seen the renaissance of, of Scottish Jewry. We've welcomed new university Jewish societies into our movement. Uh, we saw the return of University Challenge, which is everyone's favorite and only uh, into university Jewish quiz. Um, contest. We saw uh, the year of student sport with uh, JSOC teams up and down the country, the resurrection of, of Aleph, uh, the magazine of, of Jewish students, and we took hundreds of non-Jewish university officials and student leaders to Auschwitz to learn about contemporary and historic uh, anti-Semitism. We had the biggest ever convention and conference with hundreds of students debating on and voting on the issues that matter to them. That, that's who we are, it's what we do. Uh, we stood up for our principles and campaigned against the extremism that threatens our community, whether that's extremism from outside or inside the Jewish community. Uh, we campaigned and protested against hateful speakers on campus, uh, uh, led and are leading the change in the National Union of Students. Um, and we are continuing to resist the fundamentalists and supremacists who dare speak 
in the name of our community at every turn. Now, a lot has been written, deputies, about my generation and the way in which we differ from previous generations. And, and it's true that our community has changed and, and is changing still. Now, I know for all of us, change can be unsettling, as can the pace of that change. But in the face of those trends, we shouldn't retreat into what Rabbi Sachs described as narrow sects of the like-minded um, and instead try to understand one another. Uh, our community sadly has become very fragmented and polarized. I think we all have a duty to work to bridge the divides of which we're all uh, cognizant. Um, and we should take heart from the fact that irrespective of whether we agree or disagree with all the decisions they make, we have a generation, a new generation who are grounded uh, in, in Jewish values and eager to apply those values in new and innovative ways. I think we need to, to, to listen and learn from and speak to those who've gone before us as a generation and, and not assume ours to be the only answers to the problems we face. And in that spirit, I'd, I'd really welcome any questions and uh, look forward to the discussion this morning. Right, could everybody please turn off your Wi-Fi because I'm really sorry, we're all losing connection. Joe, um, Joel, you were amazing. You you were in credit for one hour twenty four. So I think it's fair to let deputies have questions for oh, six minutes. You have extra time. Love it. Could you please come to the microphone and give your name and constituency? Anyone in the room? And then I'm also looking on online to see if anybody's got any questions there. Peter Vogel, West London Synagogue for Reformed Jews. Uh, can you tell us about the current state of anti-Semitism in British universities? Thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, I think it's important to, to, to recognise as the introduction to the Community Security Trust's um, biannual report into anti-Semitic incidents. Uh, acknowledges and, and that report makes clear that the overwhelming majority of, of Jewish students have positive experiences of university. We did see sadly a 22% rise from this uh, two year report on from the previous report. Uh, and that's sadly uh, one of two reports, significant reports that have come out during my tenure. The other uh, found a, an overall hostile environment within the National Union of Students. That was an independent report carried out by Rebecca Tuck, uh, Casey. And I think, yeah, we are, we are seeing, sadly, uh, be it from university lecturers, from a, a fringe, uh, and, and from some student societies, real hostility directed towards Jewish students. But I think one of the really heartening things I've seen this year is that Jewish students are keen not to be defined by their detractors. Um, and they're building thriving, inclusive, innovative communities in spite of the odds. So there is a real persistent problem. Uh, but the students I speak to up and down the country are keen uh, not to not to be defined uh, by that. Thank you. Online, um, we've got Johnny Weinberg, and we're going to try and move the stand if we can. So apologies, Peter, that you you couldn't get in between there. Um, so Johnny Johnny Weinberg, and then do you want to go to the microphone? You've got uh, Denise and Judith. If you want to go to the microphone, Johnny. Hi, Johnny Weinberg. Hi, Johnny Weinberg, Jewish Action for Mental Health. Um, I want to ask about mental health of Jewish students, particularly since um, outside of Greater Manchester, where we are, um, and London, you don't have the sizable Jewish communities to give that support. And I'm just wondering how um, uh, those students access support. We're able to give support to any student from Greater Manchester or any student studying in Greater Manchester. But what happens to those in Birmingham or Leeds or Hull or elsewhere? Thank you for your question and thank you for the work you do in supporting uh, our communities in Greater Manchester uh, with mental health. Student mental health is a real persistent problem on campus. It's something we hear about the entire time. Uh, we do a lot of work in collaboration with uh, campus providers such as Student Minds and individual universities. Uh, but you're right that the communal infrastructure in, in, in more remote communities uh, you know, in, in places like uh, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, parts of the country which which don't have as developed Jewish infrastructure, uh, you know, that those students are facing a real challenge. And that's why I think the work of UJS is so vital. Uh, I'm proud to be part of a team of, of eight sabbatical officers this year, nine next year, who travel the country um, to support our students. And I think, think that's why it's really uh, vital, because very often students uh, are living away from home for the first time. They uh, it, it might be their first time outside of a community and it's vital that we create these homes away from homes where they can be supported. 
Thank you, Denise. And then we've got Joy Wolf online and then Judith. Thank you. Denise Lester, South Hampstead uh, Synagogue. First of all, it's great that you're here and UJS is the lifeblood and future of our community. And I wish you and UJS um, well. My question is twofold. Um, bearing in mind um, that uh, there is a rise in anti-Semitism, as you've indicated, and there are parents online and this meeting is being recorded and, and will be um, streamed. Are there specific programmes um, and strategies in place to support um, students who are on the less Jewish affiliated um, communities? And also, uh, and if so, what are they? And also, what um, interface and interfaith group work do you do to engage to educate others in relation to the ways of Judaism and tolerance with us? to assist those students and parents watching. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. It's a great question. I, I think, first of all, uh, it's worth speaking about kind of on a national level. So fortunately in the community, we're blessed to have, you know, well-established organizations like UJS, like uh, our, our partners in the CST who do a tremendous work, amount of work in this area. This year, uh, we've seen three trips, three, you know, three times we've literally uh, together in partnership with the Holocaust Education Trust as part of a, uh, a program called Lessons from Auschwitz Universities. We've taken hundreds of university officials, sports team captains, faith community leaders, chaplains to, to Auschwitz. And they have beforehand, they, 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 there's a talk from a survivor. They learn about anti-Semitism, its history, its genealogy, and its present. Uh, and so that's one program that, that's, that's underway that, that does reach a tremendous amount of, of people from, from other faith communities. Um, we also, on, on individual campuses, have great relations with, with other faith societies. Um, and as you say, it's, it's vital that we, we communicate with the wider student movement because uh, quite frankly, many people uh, who, who go to university have not encountered a, Jew, a, Jew, a Jewish student before or the Jewish community. Uh, we are 9,000 Jewish students. That's a fraction of, a, of one of the London universities across the UK and Ireland. So that's why um, that, that work and that education is so important. Thank you. Uh, Joy Wolf. And then Judith, and then thank, we'll say thank you to, to Joel. Muted now. We can hear you, Joy. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, in terms of what's happening on campus and other organisations such as Camera or Stand With Us, to what extent you're able to work with them and utilise their expertise as well. And my second thing is, there's been quite a bit of concern recently that the commitment of Jewish youth movements is not as, as um, strong towards Israel um, as it has been in the past. And I wondered if you'd like to comment on that. I'm incredibly proud of the work we do in partnership with our Jewish youth movements. Um, I think, look, it's important to recognize that people, young people are incredibly committed to and connected to Israel. And the way they express that commitment might change. Uh, over time, and we, we would expect it to change. Uh, so, so the fact that we have uh, youth movements who are speaking up, who are, stand, who are standing up uh, and, and representing their members, I think is a very healthy thing in the community. You know, it's natural that we have a divergence of views, but I think youth movements are representing their members in this regard. Uh, and similarly, look, we're a, we're a, a cross-communal organization. We believe in peer leadership. Each year at our annual conference, students come together um, and uh, vote on on the stances we take the positions we we, we we hold on a number of issues including israel so we might differ with from a couple of those uh, organizations you mentioned in that we're kind of a democratic representative body um so our function is different uh, but we do represent a, a wide range of students uh, who have different views on israel uh, and that can be a challenge sometimes but i think often you need to you need to acknowledge that there are differences of opinion and that's what we seek to do whilst representing where the majority uh, of Jewish student opinion is going and obviously that has changed in recent years and I think it it has also uh, changed since since uh, November and the election of this government. Thank you and the last question thank you and then just so you can be ready tech team when the uh, division reports are prepared the the clock will go on for two two minutes for for deputies thank you.
Hello, Julie Crinsley, Muswell Hill Synagogue, and I'm also a member of the Harringay Multi-Faith Forum. Joel, it's brilliant you're here, and it's fantastic that we can hear it from you in person. So I was just thinking in terms of communicating everything you're doing, is there any way that I could access, or one can access, access more details about the interfaith activities, and also about Scottish Jewellery, and then I've just got one extra thing. Okay, I'll, I'll do the first bit yeah. quickly and then I'll come back to you. So uh, thank you and thanks for, for the incredible work uh, you do in Harringay. I think in terms of Scottish jury, it's, it's one of the things I, that, that just is, is really thrilling. I've, I've been up to see Friday night dinners with 150 people sitting in Edinburgh. We had a, a Shabbaton in the Highlands uh, where you know we, we hiked, we ice skated in partnership with Chaplaincy and you, you saw just students from across different uh, Scottish communities, be that Aberdeen, Dundee, Glasgow, Edinburgh, St Andrews. So there is a tremendous amount of work going on in Scotland. Um, and we in our kind of, uh, in our termly um, magazine, Olive, we, we do talk about that work. And our social media has a lot of the details in terms yeah, of our brilliant. interfaith work, but I'm also happy to, to chat to you after yeah, as well. Yeah, no, that would be helpful. And finally, just because I'm doing the um, Board of Deputies report for the AGM, I was just thinking, we really need to flag up the work that you're doing. It's absolutely brilliant, because sometimes people just think it's a certain generation and we're very intergenerational. So thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. A big hand for Joel and Joel. <laughs> Thank you. You can hear how very much you're appreciated. Thank you to you and your team for the fantastic work. Please keep this up and we're all here to give you any support that you that you need. So thank you. Now time for the uh, division report. They're allocated uh, 15 minutes each. Um, if any deputies want to ask um, questions, two minutes will come up on the uh, on the clock so could we're just joined uh, just just in case you're wondering uh, by Colin Grayson he he is um, standing in for Tony Tony Leifer uh, today so let's hope this works online Michael Ziff do we have you online to present your report oh, hear me. oh there we go hello can you hear me we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Please okay. proceed. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I apologise for not being there in person, but I'm in Israel uh, and actually in Jerusalem, uh, which you can't see behind me. Um, very quickly on the numbers, uh, on Friday, um, I was given some updated numbers uh, for the month of March and the cumulative position has now changed from a small deficit to a small surplus. Um, that's nothing that we should be getting massively excited about at this moment in time. Uh, and there is still remain for concern on uh, three fronts. And number one, uh, the communal contributions continue to uh, be below budget. Um, we are very concerned about them. Uh, I am happy to talk to treasurers of synagogues, financial representatives of synagogues, chairman of synagogues, come and see you. Uh, and I think all of you know that I'm saying Kaddish at this moment in time. So traveling around um, absolutely suits me uh, uh, at any time to come to Shul, uh, whichever one you want to, but also like the opportunity of talking with relevant people about um, funds and how we can try and improve the funds from individual shuls. So I'm really concerned about the communal contributions uh, at this moment in time. Um, we're still awaiting uh, certain other funds. As far as the fundraising is concerned, uh, Michael Weger and I are working on a strategy. We have a list of 170 people to write to in the community. Um, the letters will be ready to go. Um, just before uh, Shavuot, so I know it's next week when I get back on Tuesday, um, I'm sitting down with Sarah to write the letter, to uh, sign the letters and send them off. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting to top and tail every letter that I send, because I think that is really important in this current environment at the moment. Um, moving on, uh, investment portfolio. Um, again, on Friday, we had first... Um, numbers back from uh, the advisor 
and it indicates that we're probably about evens uh, on the first quarter. Um, so we've got no increase, no decrease uh, in terms of the, the asset value. Um, <coughs> uh, the, the team are working on other areas of risk management, um, deputy engagement, um, and there's been quite a lot of work that's gone on during the course of the last few weeks um, by uh, individual committees of the uh, FNO committee. And I want to thank everybody who's <coughs> putting in uh, a lot of time to uh, try and achieve and get the organization on a steady footing. Um, beyond that, I've got nothing else to add this morning um, other than to say, please contact me at any time. I really want to come to the synagogues, really want to try and talk to people about how we can um, <coughs> boost the communal contribution. We did, oh, sorry, one other question um, or, or statement. We completed a uh, evening on Monday evening of questions around the budget formation. Um, there's more work to be done following on from that. There were between, uh, during the course of the uh, our conversation we had between 16 and 20 people on the call. So thank you those who came to the call, uh, to the uh, Zoom meeting, and we will probably do one um, after we've done the revision of the budgets, which will now take place during the course of the next month. Thank you very much indeed. I think there's a question from Jay. Hi, Please, yes. Proceed. Thank you. Um, I was uh, I was listening in um, uh, last time uh, this came up. I think it was in in the last meeting when we talked about the new initiative uh, of, of of going out there and looking for for funds and and the word uh, high value individuals uh, was mentioned and other initiatives uh, to, uh, to, to, to increase our fundraising activity, which is always needed in any organization of any size. Um, I, I'm an organizational enthusiast. Um, and as, as a deputy for the Jewish Representative Council in, in, in Greater Manchester, my, my, my view is this. Um, the, that is the there is the external element uh, of this initiative, which is to go out there and look for fundraising and increase the funds that way. But there is also, for me, there is also an opportunity internally to involve deputies, to involve deputies, uh, not so much in, in, in a task and finish type exercise, but um, on an ad hoc basis uh, on. On, on projects that are specific around this area. And um, I, for one, am quite happy to be, to, to, to be involved in that. And I think if there is, the point I'm making, if there is buy-in from deputies, then there is commitment. And if there is commitment, then there is action and there are results. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So in the room, um, can you please remember whether you're online or in the room to give your name and your constituency? And someone needs to turn me down to my right. Um, we've got Deborah uh, Cohen who will speak and then online after that will be Flora Frank and then Jerry Lewis who's in the room. Over to you, Deborah. Um, thank you for your report, Michael. Um, we have discussed a number of times the questions about the shore contributions, um, and uh, I'm, I'm not that optimistic um, about the, uh, where we're going with that f uh, in the future, just because so many uh, members of the community, like the wider community, and synagogues are financially hard-pressed. So I'm um, in common with the previous speaker, really. I'm asking if we could have a report sooner rather than later, a written report on a kind of con contingency plan as to what to do 
if actually um, we're looking at a permanent reduction in shore contributions, covering all the things that the previous speaker mentioned, so that we have a more kind of systemic approach to this. Um, and secondly, would it be possible every calendar quarter to actually have a balance sheet with a statement of the reserves so that we can actually see where we're going with the reserves? I have no idea what they are, but I'm conscious that you know interest rates have gone up a little bit. And uh, maybe whereas there's no in the past few years, uh, income on reserves would have been nugatory maybe there's some income to be had but we can't see that we can't see the reserves position without a balance sheet thank you yeah so to our, marie i'm going to answer the question okay um, so as far as the contingency is concerned that's very much behind the um review that we're doing uh on the budget um which is going to take place this month um, so as soon as we've seen the outcome of the budget uh, and then um, the results of that, we can then start to take action accordingly uh, for the rest of the year. Um, as far as the budget is concerned, a uh, uh, balance sheet is concerned, uh, there's no problem on that. And we can do that issue that quarterly as well. So thank you for uh, both of you for the suggestions. Uh, and I think that very much was part of the discussion we had on Monday night as well. Flora Frank, you're online. And then Jerry Lewis, if you can come up to the stand. <coughs> uh, Flora Frank, British Emu now. Thank you very much, Michael. My question is, have you any idea why this should be? I am taking into consideration the financial situation, but could it be that People have lost any faith in us? I hope not. And therefore, it follows on to the second question. I mean, in the past, I used to be quite active with this many, many years ago. I think when Jerry Lewis was in um, vice chair and um, in, in our, obviously, subcommittee, we discussed it at length. And I know that I put forward and it did have, I think, deputies personally, Michael, it's wonderful that you go and talk to everybody, but deputies who are known in their own synagogue, I belong for British m and and I know we pay, so I don't have a shawl, but when I had a shawl, I would, and I still do in my Edgeware United, I still tell people the importance and the crucial, the vital you know, work that we do. I don't know if we deputies, and I'm talking about myself as well, are doing this. I think that's extremely important because sometimes we're just not on the uh, radar. You know, people, they sign the form. I've, I've gone into the school and asked, why is it? And they said, we don't know. And I'm asking you, I think really we have to find out why it is that people are not giving it. Because it is, it's a lot of money to some people. It's, but on the other hand, you know, we're spending on other different things. And this is something for our community. So I think we've got to be much more proactive. And deputies have to take it upon themselves to speak out. And whenever anybody speaks at a meeting, may I just say, they, any, whatever you're talking about, if it's finance or it's Israel, still bring it in, always bring it in, that we need these uh, funds and how uh, more important they are. I think that one of the things that I could do is actually talk to the deputies themselves. And it's probably what, what you're suggesting is something that we haven't done enough of over the last three or four years. And we will follow that up. So thank you for that. Thank you. Jerry, Jerry Lewis in the room. Jerry Lewis, Hampstead Synagogue. Um, five questions. <laughs> Number one. Can you tell right, us yeah. what your success rate of fundraising in Israel has been? Number two, could you give us an update, please, with regards to the office? Are we going somewhere? If so, where? And if so, when? Number three, is this going to be a permanent venue for our meetings? Or are you looking elsewhere for meetings? It's convenient here. It's certainly comfortable. But we'd like to know your view. Number four, any plans for a dinner? Or are we get not going to bother with the dinner? And finally, just to remind you and your division and all deputies, I managed to get through after a lot of opposition the proposal for an under 35s system of deputies. I worked very hard to get it. 
could we please start promoting that idea among synagogues now so that when they come to their AGMs next year, some of them start as early as January, they're reminded that any deputy, or any person under 35 can represent their synagogue at no cost to their synagogue. We must bring in more young blood. Thank you. Can I Thank answer, you. Marie? Yes, please. Yeah, I was thanking Jerry for being within the time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. As I thank Joel. Jerry, thank you. Jerry, Jerry, thank you for those questions. I'll ask them in reverse order because everybody remembers the last question. Um, so number five, the proposal for the under 35s, I think is a very good idea. And it's something that we will take on board as far as the deputy recruitment thing is concerned, the, um, as far as we're concerned in FNO. And we will follow that up with the shoes. Um, so yes, thank you for that. Plans for a dinner at this moment in time. There are no plans for a dinner. Um, the last dinner, um, and that was obviously before my time, I was told that the last few dinners were uh, barely break even uh, or even small losses. And unless we were to get the big uh, contributors to put the money in, uh, and I don't believe that the persons who had done that are necessarily able to do so currently. Um, I don't think it's something, a risk that we should take on at this moment in time. Um, the office, I'll take two and three together. Suffice us to say that there is a important meeting taking place on Tuesday morning. Um, and at that time, we will be in a position, hopefully, to reach a agreement uh, on a, a way forward for um, an office. Uh, the plan would be not to be moving again but to be staying uh, in one place. Um, uh, so therefore answering your point about a permanent venue. Um, I agree with your sentiment, which I assume was, you don't like the idea of uh, up sticking and moving all the time. And finally, my success in Israel, as far as fundraising is concerned, was I arrived there of Shabbat. Um, and uh, apart from going to Minions for saying Kaddish, of which I'm pleased to say, this morning's Minion had that was the third minion of the morning in the shul I went to. They had 95 people. Um, I think we, and they had, um, and when they said the Kohenim, they had a minion of Kohenim there as well. So there we go. Um, uh, but I will, if I do raise some money here, I will let you know, Jerry. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you very much, Michael, for your report. Thank you for coming in from, from Jerusalem. Obviously, we, we are, we're really sorry we're at okay come on Kim come on one more question and then uh, we will we'll move on thank you quite right I did promise Kim Cohen Northwood United Synagogue I'm sorry if it's more of the same but um, this is um, a point about the communal contribution we started off with the communal levy where most congregants members of synagogues members of organizations felt that that was a requirement it had been justified it was added to our shul bills or our, our um, commitments um, to organizations the subtle change that happened is when it became a, con a communal contribution that changed and there's a certain element now of uh, choice of saying well do i give the board of deputies or do i do i give to other charities how many charities have we received um, notices from saying we have to raise 200,000 in 36 hours and or 24 hours and this is how much we're trying to raise. This is probably, I don't know how many meetings I've been to, um, where, um, forgive me for saying that, we go to a, a meeting on uh, finance and there are no figures mentioned. We have no idea what a small loss and what a small um, uh, profit is and how much we're trying to raise. I think it's now time, if I can just say that Whoever is on the, um, this um, division should realize that they have 300 um, delegates, 300 salespeople here to sell to their own individual communities the importance of uh, what is required by the Board of Deputies, why it's required and how much is required. So I think we really need to get a bit more businesslike and say, if you're going to not put your communal um, uh, levy contribution in, um, this is why you need to, and this is what we're going to do with it. Because the first question people ask me is, well, how much are we trying to raise? Do I even know? But I say, well, actually, we're trying to go from a, a, um, a loss to a profit. So it is very important now that you recognize that 
it's more engagement. I think it's what uh, Flora was saying. More engagement of the deputies. We are your sales team. We are your fundraising team. You're on red. So that, that's um, the only thing is, so please, um, please involve the deputies more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much now, Michael, for um, presenting your, your report. And I also agree, it's very difficult times. The, perhaps the membership of synagogues has also declined. There's, there's hardship. Uh, that we know, and thirty pounds is a lot to to people. We're very fortunate that we we had a, a, a very large legacy, not so long ago, and perhaps we we should look at um, things like a legacy cam campaign as well. I can confirm the dinners um, did run did run at a loss. They were so popular, everybody wanted to come. Uh, and we had a lot of VIPs in particular who wanted to come, and. Uh, we did have a sponsor uh, of the dinner, but unfortunately, they've 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 now been a sanctioned person, so we can't rely. We can't rely on that. We would like to have a dinner, but there's no point unless we're going to make money because the organisation going on behind those dinners before Michael's time, so I'm commenting, was was huge. But they were were wonderful dinners. I, I have to say, I really really miss the dinner. I'd like to be able to get that that off the ground if if we if we could but we have to be prudent and money is a consideration for for the future so we have to look at other ways but we are lucky that we do have reserves so the board of deputies will be going on for another day but we do need to we do need to look at the future thank you um edwin um edwin's also online could you please um present your report and thank you edwin uh good afternoon deputies uh, I am delighted to present you the report. I want to tell you that the unedited report was four pages. Uh, the, the division is actually producing, and I'm so proud of everyone. Before opening it to the questions, I have three asks today. So uh, ask number one is, is regarding the implementation of the commissions uh, for diversity and racially uh, sensitivity. Uh, I want to ask now for the deputies to take their part in what we are doing. I think the commission was a groundbreaking, uh, was a contribution to the whole community and a legacy to, but it has to be implemented so that we can look proudly at something that has not happened before with any faith group, i.e. examining our own uh, uh, selves and coming up with these recommendations, 119 of them. What we are asking the deputies now is the following. This week, we are going to send every single deputy a questionnaire, a survey, call it what you want. But it is really, we'd, we would love it not to be an optional, not to have back 10, 20, 30, 40%, but 80% responses. And what we are asking is the, not just what progress has been done towards it, but actually a reminder for each deputy, what were the, uh, the recommendations, number one? What are the highlighted one? If it was not done in your synagogue or your organization, why not? And how can we make it happen? And most importantly, could we ask you to uh, ask the board, the council of your synagogues for you to actually bring this subject formally to the synagogue's attention. The type of asks are easily, some of them are really easily implemented right there and then for you to inform us. For example, choose a date. The 30th of November is a day where one, uh, for example, on the uh, question of Ms. Rahim, uh, choose a, as a, one of the projects that we are recommending for Jews of color. Do you have any in your synagogue? These things are, uh, so we are waiting for your responses. We would like them to be uh, back by within the next fortnight, including if you actually manage to get uh, an audience or uh, do a, a, a presentation for your own council synagogues. So uh, that's coming out and uh, kindly do not file it for later. That's number one. And number two, 
uh, the second ask is I'm going to ask Rosalind Lewis on the Holocaust education to have to speak for two minutes about her ask. Rosalind, are you on? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, two minutes, please. Right, yes, certainly. Um, hello, I'm going to talk about the project of the Shoah boards. And I know many of you I have spoken to, and many of you have already put the Shoah boards up. Um, please do display them, in case you've forgotten to, prominently in your synagogue. Take a photo of them, and uh, possibly with your rabbi and yourself, and if possible, a survivor of a gen the next generation or even a grandchild next to the board. And if you do this, send it to Sarah Radovan. I know I've asked many of you to do that, but some of you I didn't get hold of or it wasn't possible. I can't impress on you how important this project is. You must all be aware how anti-Semitism has raised its ugly head again and it will go on doing so. And so we must keep the, the Holocaust, the memory of the Holocaust alive. So it doesn't go into the mists of time of, oh, just another massacre. So this, we really ask you to help us with. If there are those of you who did, either didn't manage to speak to me or weren't interested or didn't want the board, please rethink it and do get in touch with me. You can get my particulars from the list that we have all got or from Sarah, but it's really, really important. that We don't just do it this year. We do it every year and our successors do it every year. Thank you for listening to me and please do what I ask. Thank you. The, uh, the third ask is uh, from Vice Chair Andrew Gilbert, who together with his working group, have done an incredible job analyzing the census and going back two census before, charts, slides, and come up with seven questions that we want to ask. Now, we cannot fit this within the few minutes that we have here. It, uh, so Andrew sampled last time uh, for a few minutes, some of those charts and slides. So I've asked him now to send to every deputy the entire presentation uh, which is going out today with the seven questions. And you can either respond to us directly, or maybe if you feel the need for a special meeting to discuss that or, uh, or a special session within the plenary, whatever happens. But at the moment, the ask is please read your email, check the presentation, look at it. This is what communities is all about. Our work is to analyze, to decide, to, vis to have the vision. Finally, before I open it for questions, uh, myself and all the HOs are more than willing, more than ready. Just invite us and we will be there at your, regarding the communal levy, regarding what does the board do. We are, we are at your service and please use the opportunity. Thank you. I open it for the questions, Madam President. We've got two in the room. I'm just looking, um, we've got some tech yeah. issues here. So I hope that we'll pick up anybody online. Um, should we start off in the room anyway? Thank you. Good morning, Janet Tresman, Finchley Progressive Synagogue. Just want to ask you to look around this room, look at the walls, and you will find examples of diverse Jewish communities and ask yourself how many representatives of them are there here? Answer probably none. Ask yourself also, from Jerry Lewis, a previous question about under 35 <coughs> observers. Sorry, Michael Ziff, it's not a new idea. It's been going on for a very long time. I've been a deputy for 17 years and the under 35 observers was a feature then. Why aren't they here? The answer is because we're not doing our job. We're not representatives of the whole of our community. We're a certain sort of representative but we're not a representative of the under 35s on the whole. There are some here, but not many. And we're not a representative of the diverse communities. We've got work to do and so have those online. Thank you. I, I think in I, fairness, there's a yeah, lot of I, 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 people I am, I am. online. I would just want to mention that and people yeah. shouldn't 
Pitch because Fauci. I am most yeah. grateful for this call. And, and you'll see the way the asks are coming to you regarding the diversity. And you'll see that you, each one of you now is empowered to ask these questions from their own boards, from their own organizations. And if you need any help from us, just, we will very happy to even come and does that, do that presentation. Let's get that commission, the second stage of it, uh, uh, a, a total mapping of the org things and let's get going and, and implement. Thank you. Rob, I see Rob on the online, uh, Marie, can I ask? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, we've got some tech trouble here, so yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, Rob Sassoon, um, I'm here as a representative of the S&P Safadi congregation, which I think compared to um, many of the deputies would be considered a diverse community, although of course we were founder members of the board. Uh, but I'm also under the age of 35, and I just wanted to say that in the, um, in the 11 years I've been on the board. I think the board has come a very long way in increasing the representation that we see um, from a diverse range of people within our community. Now, I agree that there is always more that we can do and that we should do. But certainly in the time that I've been on the board, I just wanted to highlight that I think we have come a long way in engaging communities that we perhaps had not been engaging previously. I think the average age of our deputies has gotten a lot younger in that time as well. And so I just kind of wanted to, to say that, yes, while there is more we can do, I think we're already doing pretty well and, and have been certainly in the time I've been on the board. Thank you. Just to add to this, Rob, it is our intention in before closing stage two of the diversity is to actually announce that the board of deputies has taken on all that it can all the relevant recommendations and have implemented it. So thank you for, for, uh, for that. Thank you, Sheila Giewold. Thank you, Marie. Good morning, everybody. Sheila Giewold, Cardiff United Synagogue. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to applaud all the work that's been going on from hearing from Joel, the universities, for the support of Israel, for the work that the board does defending our community. But the jewel in the crown is our outreach education, everybody. There is somebody in this room, I'm not going to mention any names, when challenged, what does the board do for us? Why should I pay our contribution? Brought up the fact, the work that we do going round. I'm off to Hull tomorrow, you know, to talk to children about being Jewish. They may never have met another Jewish person. It's the most important thing we do. Now we're being approached by people who in the workplace feel uncomfortable when stereotypes are used about rich Jews. We need to get out there. We need to speak to those people who are willing to listen and those who perhaps do not want to have those conversations. This is what I do. This is what I support. And you know, thank you to all the volunteers who helped me. Thank you. Thank you. Next question in the room, Edwin. Shall I start? Please do. Name and constituency as Hello, well. Thank John you. Lawrence, uh, West London Synagogue. I'd just like to add to, because I had precisely the same thought as the first speaker, whether Edwin, you could identify somebody who could come to us here from to speak to us about Jews of colour. I think it's a vitally important area too, so that it's actually somebody could talk to us about it about their experience if you might know somebody who could do that i mean i, I wish i uh, did but... we we, we are <laughs> sorry can i answer we are doing much better than that the launch of that report will we will have jews of color we will have mizrahim we will have a a, a a big thank you to all the people who the stakeholders pages all the people who contributed and and you will see that that meeting will be a celebration of the legacy of that commission we did. Thank you for that. But if you actually want to do something in your own synagogue organization, please get in touch and we will organize that in your place. But for as far as the board is, we're going to have a major launch for that uh, report closing stage two. 
and in it probably inviting the community to take over the implementation having we having done all that we can we have implemented for us we have called every stakeholder we are going through each one of your deputies we've done pages we've done the providers and now really up to the community to pick up uh, what we have achieved thank Am you I done? anyone else in the room i think thank you very much oh, one thank more in one much. more in the room would you like to come to the um, and whilst you're coming to the stand i will say i went to west london synagogue on friday night and there were plenty of jews of color in west london synagogue there's a huge diversity there name and constituency please paul hart mosaic liberal synagogue hi edwin hi hi, hi. I was one of the first to apply for a show of all uh, for our synagogue, which is Mosaic Liberal Synagogue in Stanmill, Stanmore Hill. It duly arrived and it sat there and it sat there and it sat there. Our show consists of three member synagogues. There's Liberal Reform and the Zulti. We have a council that's in charge that runs all three Oh, that's called the Mosaic Jewish Community. And it's up to them to decide whether to display the board or not. I had a quick round with them. And in the end, they decided to display it just for our President Marie's visit. Once Marie had gone, <laughs> seriously, seriously, once Marie had gone, the board was taken down. I don't know where it's been, been put. I was wondering, Edward, if you could get in touch with their show and just question them or i'll, I'll come back for another i i will I, I, I will do i will i'll do better than that i will make an appointment to come and give a talk and uh, and and make sure that these boards are there when i'm there thank you <laughs> thank you there's, a, there's a flora here uh, there's one one more and then it's time for the next report uh, thank you. Hello, is that me? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I just thought I should say that Lancaster and Lakes Jewish community will be working with Dawn Waterman and Leed Walkin to host a Zoom discussion about the board's racial inclusivity in the Jewish community report. And we were offered um, a Jew, um, a Jew of the global majority to come and speak, but I think it's really important that white people put ourselves out there and do this work rather than asking people who have um, who have been targeted by racism to have to front it. Anyway, thank, thank you, you very so much, much for doing this work. Thank you for your Thank you. I'm done, Mary. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you, deputies. All right, one more at the back. As as we had a quick question, did you have a question? Okay, please come to the stand. But this, this is it. Thank you so much. Don't like to turn anybody down. And then we'll we'll move on. Thank you, Dory. Ah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dory Schmetterling, New West End Synagogue. Of course, I welcome a call that we should be as diverse as possible. But to be fair, the pictures around the room appear to be largely of Ethiopian Jews maybe one or two Bene Israel, that's from mostly from Bombay and the rest of Maharashtra. And I would be interested to know how many of them are here, in particular the president who went to that reception and said there were lots of people, lots of Jews of colour, and I'd be interested to know what that means. Thank you very much. West London Synagogue has a very wide diversity of members of the synagogue. If you want to talk to Edo, or to the deputies in West London synagogue, it, it it does, and it has a has a history of of diversity and welcoming uh, to to all Jews. So it it is a synagogue. Maybe more of you should should uh, come come and have come and have a look. It also has a very big um, LGBT uh, community as well, and it's probably one of our most diverse synagogues in my view. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm, I, I'm, I think Edwin should, should, should comment. Edwin, could you, could you respond? To, to, to Dory? She's not in the room. Yes, Dory, Dory has uh, I raised. Think, I, I heard what Dory said, but I think he, 
asked you about the West London. I we are we will we part of the, the questionnaire that we sent we are sending this week is asking you to identify whether you have in your own organizations and institutions whether you have Jews of color and it's really up to you to answer that and for us to map the situation we, we are contacting anyone who came with us on the commission and we have and Denny is calling each and every one of them uh, myself and Michael Wiga, we are calling all the stakeholders uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, Don is calling the so we we can only get the information from yourself and uh, I think you answered about West uh, West London but uh, otherwise we cannot do any more at the board uh, uh, really on 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 that part. Thank you. We're going to move on now because we're we're running late. So apologies. Um, right, Amanda, please, could you uh, present the Defence and Interfaith Relations Report? Apologies to any other deputies, but I want to try to be fair to the other HOs here. And we've got the new speakers who also want to have their opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, deputies. Good morning. I think. Oh no. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to, first of all, you've all had my report and I hope you had the chance to, to read it. I'm going to pick up a few other things that aren't featured on the report itself. Um, since we did the report, there have been uh, elections, local elections in uh, 317 councils with over 8,000 seats in England contested. Um, there are 16 local authorities with more than 1,000 Jewish re residents. Um, and so uh, those were the um, areas that we focused on most, looking at um, and encouraging candidates to look at our local manifesto for the Jewish community. I just want to say congratulations to Michael Rubenstein, who many of you will know was elected um, for Pilkington Park. So congratulations, Michael. <laughs> Uh, one of the councillors that was elected um, onto Stockton on Tees Borough Council was a guy called Shaquille Hussein, and many of you will have read the um, the anti-Semitic comments that he'd had in his social media posts. We wrote to the Labour to the Conservative Party chairman um, because uh, we had already spoken to them about in increasing the vetting of their candidates, um, and he has since been suspended. We're meeting with the uh, Conservative Party chairman next week, and we will pick this up with more com with, to um, make sure that uh, those investigations go uh, thorough. Um, I want to pick up the uh, suggestion that was made at the last plenary meeting when we were together in March, that uh, we engage deputies more deeply in, um, in our advocacy work. There's been several comments this morning um, and showing an appetite for deputies to be engaged more in our work. Um, and, and I hope you, that you will have, I know that the president would say this, but I hope that, I hope you will agree that this um, group of honorary officers have all done um, an enormous amount of work to engage deputies more widely in the work of the divisions than maybe has been done before. But there's always more we can do. Um, and we've picked up conversations with Phil Rosenberg, who made the original suggestion about uh, the possibility of running some kind of advocacy day later in the year. Uh, what I can say to deputies right now is that we will be introducing a series of training events for deputies to empower them and bring up their advocacy skills, um, as well as to answer any questions that they may have on how to best represent the Board of Deputies within the community as well with external stakeholders. And so look out for those opportunities because we will be um, running that across the summer and then looking to see what we can do on advocacy <laughs> further. Phil specifically mentioned um, working on something towards the pre pre prescribing of the IRGC. And I'll leave it to David uh, because the Defence Division and the International Division are working together on that. I'll leave it to David to pick that up. The final point I want to make before I open to questions is the fact that on the 30th of May, we, the Defence Division will be holding a, an online session with a speaker from Fighting Online Anti-Semitism, who's here in the UK from Israel. 
if any deputies want to join that meeting, um, automatically any of you that are on our open anti-Semitism working group will be invited. If any other deputies want to join that meeting, please contact me and I'll make sure that you get joining instructions. Many thanks and I'll open for questions. I can see nothing in the room, so are there any questions online? Come on, deputies, you've had lots of questions from my, from my fellow colleagues. That's fine, all right. Just one thing. Um, Jeremy Michelson, uh, Manchester Great U and uh, Central Synagogue. Of course, um, as well as the defense and the international uh, departments working together also of course defense and education are very very closely allied because one way of combating ignorance that uh, breeds anti-semitism is education you'll be um, and i think amanda mentioned in a report the bloom a review i think it was uh, i think it was sort of uh, alluded to wasn't it Absolutely. um no it wasn't brian's doing although i'm sure uh, i'm sure he he would be quite pleased with some of the things that were said um no it's colin bloom um and it looked at it said do faith uh sorry do governments do faith uh the answer is yes they should and one of the, amongst the many many recommendations uh, and the one that interested me in particular was the fact that um civil servants local authority uh, officials and of course the big organizations like the nhs the police etc etc should be much more aware of um issues of faith than they are at the moment and in greater manchester we've taken the, we're, we're about to take the very first steps uh on this uh, we know a lot of work is being done uh, myself and a colleague on the management board of the um, jewish representative council of greater manchester and region will be looking to see what is going on already and i know there's quite a bit and we'll be looking for where the gaps are and whether we can start to fill those gaps i'll be contacting brian for example and louis and see what's going on in the armed forces i know there's a lot going on whether it's going on anywhere near greater manchester you know i want to know that and i'm sure there'll be other organizations that uh, if, and if anybody wants to contact me on that issue i'd be very grateful so thanks very much Thanks, Jeremy. Um, Jeremy, I thank you for bringing up the Bloom report because I think it's an important, uh, an important uh, report. Um, I've been working closely with your division um, and we've had our f a first um, internal meeting to look at which of those recommendations have relevance to um, the Board of Deputies. It's a very broad ranging set of recommendations. Um, and at this point, we haven't had a response from the government in terms of which of those recommendations they want to pick up. But in terms of the recommendations overall, they provide a good, what I would describe as an agenda for action in terms of our work on faith and interfaith. Um, and I look forward to working with deputies and across the divisions to make sure that we can do our best to, uh, to take, take note of what they, what they recommend. I have online, I have Andrew Gilbert. Sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Amanda. The, um, we, we, in terms of the Bloom Review, which I was going to mention, uh, we would look very much the work that Jeremy was talking about. It's something that the community uh, division will take, look to take forward. And I think it's something that is already going on in various ways in terms of police and also in national health, but it's a big challenge. And one of the biggest questions is who's going to fund all that outreach work. And it's a really important thing if government will come up behind it. Uh, yesterday, we had the PS, the PSC, the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign, together with um, Stop the War and Muslim Association of Britain held a rally that went from the BBC to Whitehall um, and Corbyn and MacDonald and various other in, um, not so pleasant speakers. Um, we, the Jewish community, we had a representative that what myself that watched with together with the Muslim uh, police forum. And similarly on Al-Quds Day, we watched what was going on. Police have put into play now a new policy on looking in terms of how demonstrations are policed. And it was really interesting to see that uh, they, they did intervene in terms of various flags. 
and the, there's much more intention of taking of really monitoring it. They also supported four synagogues along the route, and there is a real sense that the police are trying very hard to listen to communities, at least in that area. However, and as we saw after the Casey report and after the turnaround reports, I'm sure all of us would like to see the police accept the institutional racism in the police, and uh, I hope that will be taken forward. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks for representing the board and the London Jewish Forum at that session yesterday. Important that we had oversight of what was going on. Um, I have Denise in the room and then Louise Alman. Um, and Louise will be the last question. Yeah. Thank you. Denise Lester, South Hampstead, United Synagogue, and I'm a member of the Defence Division. Um, Amanda and the rest of the board should be commended for all the work we do in relation to anti-Semitism. Um, we represent as the board all Jews of every colour, shape and denomination. I've sat here in the room feeling slightly, un in fact, quite uncomfortable that um, there's been a discussion about um, the real concerns uh, that uh, Jews of, of, of colour are, are not here. Um, or represented. Um, I have close members who are Jewish and Black. I will say that any United Synagogue will welcome Jewish people. It should not as, as well as any other synagogue in the country. I say that so there should not be a perception that feeds into the narrative that the Jewish community are white, elitist and privileged. Any Jewish person who is of color um, should feel that they are part of the community and their voices are represented by the board and they should feel welcome to practice their faith in whatever shape or sphere as well as any other Jew of any other sexuality and race and I say this against recent press comment about racism and my comments are public they are on record and I care about our community in whatever shape, strand they are. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Denise. The only thing I would add to that is, as Edwin has said, he's sending out um, a questionnaire to all deputies, and that is the opportunity for all deputies and all in the community to give us feedback on whether our commission and our review has actually had any impact and whether all Jews are now feeling more included within the community. It gives us a sense of what more needs to be done and where it needs to be done. So thank you. Um, Louise Elman. Thank you, Amanda. Louise Elman, Jewish Labour Movement. And I was pleased to hear that you'd followed up the case of the Conservative councillor in Stockton who had made anti-Semitic remarks. And I'd like an assurance that is going to be pursued. And in recent years, we've been concentrating very much on anti-Semitism in the Labour Party because of the disgraceful situation that arose there. And we must continue to do that, although the, the whole the total picture has just changed pretty dramatically. But anti-Semitism is found in other political parties as well, and also in other parts of public life. And I would like to have an assurance that that is all going to be pursued as well that wherever people in public life whether they're on local councils from whatever party or in public life more generally um, anti-semitism will be pursued with the same fervor that we've been pursuing it in the labor party in recent years thank you thank thank you louise um, um yes you have an assurance that this will be brought up specifically when we meet with greg hans um shortly um, but I can also say, I can give you my assurance that uh, we as a board will be addressing the issue more broadly. Uh, the Defence Division has been working on an initiative which we're, we're calling addressing the culture and standards um, of in public life in terms of a, and addressing anti-Semitism. I think I've talked about it to deputies before, but we're partnering with the Joe Cox Foundation. Um, and um, it's absolutely critical that we look at culture and standards more broadly to take out the toxicity specifically around anti-Semitism, but more generally um, as well. Um, and we can speak from personal experience. So I think we've got um, a good plan um, coming forward and we will be picking that up and delighted to, um, to hear from you and would love to consult with you and engage with you to make sure we're getting it right along the way. Thanks, Louise. 
Thank you. If anyone's got any further defence questions, they can, they can pick them up, of course, in my president's statement, but we are running considerably late. So apologies. It's only fair to David to let him have a chance to present his report for the International Division. Thank you very much. I, I won't go over too much of, of the report that you guys got, mostly because we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and I can't quite remember what I said in the last meeting and what I'd say today. Uh, but if there are any questions that people want to, to pick up in there, more than happy to take them. Um, I want to start by, by talking a little about the IRGC. Um, there have been reports this week that the government are going to prescribe the Wagner Group, the, the Wagner Group, the uh, Russian paramilitary organization, uh, clearly uh, an extension of the Kremlin. That's quite right and, and very welcome. Uh, to us, it's also an opportunity to absolutely redouble our own efforts uh, to make sure that the IRGC, a paramilitary, well, an extension of the, the Iranian state, which funds terrorism around the world, including, of course, rockets that have been fired into Israel uh, this week uh, to, to try and murder Jews, which is what they try to do all over the world. We will redouble those efforts. We're also uh, continuing to, to plan a panel event in Parliament, which will be a, a cross-party uh, panel. Uh, so we're hoping to do that in the coming months. And Amanda spoke previously about some of the other uh, things that uh, one of our uh, very esteemed uh, deputies brought up in the, the last plenary. Um, so that's what I wanted to cover on IRGC. It's been a pretty difficult week, I, I think we can all agree. Um, started, of course, with uh, the awful attack on Lagba Omer in Tunisia, uh, where a worshipper was, was killed on, on the way to, to synagogue, um, and, and others were killed by, by a, a rogue soldier. Um, on top of that, of course, we have to mention the events that have been happening in Israel. Uh, thank God a, a ceasefire has been agreed that came into effect last night, but over the five-day duration that rockets were being fired, Around 1,100 rockets were fired into Israel, uh, killing two, including one it, it, who it seems was uh, a Palestinian day worker who was over from Gaza. And I think that really shows the indiscriminate nature of these rocket attacks from Gaza into Israel from the PIJ. Uh, and I'm sure we, we're all out here praying that this ceasefire holds uh, and that no more innocent lives are, uh, are, are cost. Um, on Israel, uh, more optimistically, Yesterday, you will all have received a letter with information about the mission that we will be holding at the end of the year and the ability to sign up and register. Um, we want to make sure that this is an accessible uh, trip for anyone who wants to join. That's why we have agreed at what I think is a generous subsidy program. Uh, please, if you have any questions about it, feel free to approach me, email Sara Radovan, uh, email uh, Michael Weger, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, uh, and we also have a, an, an email address for you to send, it be fully confidential, uh, we, if you want to talk about financial issues or questions you want to come, but you just don't think that the money's there, we're going to talk with you to make sure that as many people who want to join for this trip are able to join. Uh, so with that, I think I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Yeah, don't worry. Do you want to come up, in fact? Great. Phil? <laughs> thank you very much. Phil Rosenberg, Bronsby Park Center. First of all, a huge thank you to you, David, and to you, Amanda, on uh, your positive res uh, response to the proposal about the Board of Deputies Parliamentary Advocates today on the Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Since we last discussed that, there's been a report in the I newspaper that a senior Jewish leader received a, a visit from British intelligence warning them of a threat against them and their family from a group suspected to be the ILGC, which builds on a threat, uh, it builds on a statement made by Public Security Minister Tom Tugendhat in the Commons in February, where he said that British intelligence was con concerned that Iran was collecting information on British Jews and Israelis resident in Britain for kidnap or kill attacks. Uh, it's a really serious issue, and it's one that is right that the board is taking very, very seriously. And there is here an opportunity, and I think Amanda is absolutely right, for us to build on uh, tangible efforts to empower deputies to empower the board of deputies to empower the community and what we're talking about here is an advocacy day the first ever time that we've done this where as many of you as possible will come to parliament and speak to your MPs and press the case hopefully it will, it will be done even sooner um, but if we can get it done and um, we're looking at the autumn I think October Novemberish time so we'll get dates to you as soon as possible hopefully as many of you as possible will be there with the with, and I, I know many of you've got lots of experience in doing this already but training will I'm sure I hope 
get as many people as possible because this is such an important issue. Uh, let's go there. Let's get the IGC prescribed once and for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. I, I, as I've said, uh, yeah, we are redoubling our, our, issue, uh, our efforts uh, to, to ensure that the IRGC are prescribed and we're looking at every way that we can put pressure on the government to make sure that that happens, including, of course, uh, Phil's uh, suggestion. I think I had a hand up from Jeremy. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, David. Jeremy Havardi, uh, representing the Neighbourhood UK. And thank you for all the work you're doing. And you obviously you've mentioned about the prescription of the IRGC. And I think it's incredibly important that we continue to push for the prescription of the IRGC. And I think it reflects the deeper concerns in the community about the, the nefarious activities of Iran, um, all its terrorist proxies uh, in the region, and the threat that it poses, not just domestically to its own population, up to Israel, to other countries in the in the region, and I think to the West more generally. But my question really is, there seems, when, when I've discussed the prescription of the IRGC with senior diplomats, which is what we do in the Labour, there's, a, there's an incredible reluctance to actually contemplate the prescription of the IRGC, um, with some very spurious reasons given. And I wonder whether in, say, the discussions that you've had, you've come across Again, this reticence to prescribe it, and, and perhaps could you could you enlighten us on on why there is this reticence? I wouldn't want to speculate too much. I, I think that you're right that among some quarters that there is a reluctance to and, and a fear of. I think that there is probably a, a fear that if there is full prescription, that could lead to the IRGC becoming actually more uh, active in the UK in terms of their their hostile activities. I imagine that that is a part of of the fear, but in, in terms of anything wider, I'm afraid, I probably know about as much as you. And I, I must say, I know that B'nai Brit do amazing work on this and so many things, both yourself and your colleagues around the world. So thank you very much for, for everything you do there. And thank sorry you. that I'm not able to answer no. your question in, in, in any greater uh, detail. No, no, thank you. Cheers, Jeremy. And was there a question online as well? No. no. I can't see anything. Clearly, we've answered in such great detail that we've made someone change their minds. If there are no other questions in the no, room. Flora Frank. Oh, there no, we are. Fiona, 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 Fiona Frank. Uh, Flora, Fiona. Flora Frank. No, 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 Fiona. 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 Oh, we've my got gosh. Two Franks. Got two, two Franks. Lancashire Frank. and the Lakes. <laughs> Fiona. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks. Are we considering asking people going on the Israel mission to consider the carbon emissions of their flights? <laughs> offset them. Uh, anyone can offset. My understanding is that we will look at what we can do to offset carbon uh, as, as always. I mean, look, it's, it's a really fair and important point. And particularly if we look at Israel uh, through, through a lens of being, you know, a, a true innovator in the field of, of uh, agri-tech uh, and other environmental technologies, I, I, I think that, you know, this this highlights that and it's important that us going isn't you know detrimental in many other ways i think that it's clear to me that the benefits of this both to the deputies that come but also to those who we meet in israel will be greater than any uh, potential risk but I, I think it's a really fair point and we will you know look to offset as we always do in the, the work we do with eco judaism and, and elsewhere so so thank you fiona thank you <laughs> Sorry, uh, the, the reason for the laugh was uh, someone in the room said we could uh, get get the train and well, we should have a Lebanese service. All, all right. good, all good humour. As a child, I used to go to Israel by boat with my mother. It used to take about a week. I used to have to get the the train uh, from Marseille to Israel. So you never you never know. Some people are, are nodding here. Yes, <laughs> I think. I think we all just heard the sound of our treasurer fainting at the idea of us renting a uh, pleasure yacht to, to take a trip over. <laughs> Thank you very much for your report. Um, coming on to the um, president's statement, can I give some muzzle tops first of all? Richard Cohen on the engagement of his son, Edward. Carol Abrahams on the bat mitzvah of her granddaughter. And I don't want to upset Eleanor Lind because she looks eternally young, but I hear that she's 85. So a big, big muzzle to Eleanor uh, to you. 
Uh, condolences again to Michael Ziff on the very sad loss of his mother. Uh, also to the family of Neville Sassini. I'm going to, to read a tribute to him shortly on the sad, on his sad loss. And not only was he a deputy, but he was a founder member of the board's uh, deputies social action group and also um, Clive Roth. So can I, can I just read from Talia Hain uh, a tribute please to, to Neville. Neville was a remarkable individual whose compassion and generosity changed the British Jewish community for the better. Neville's passion was dedicated to climate activism and environmental causes amongst causes of justice tirelessly working to raise awareness within the Jewish community and beyond. His deep love for the planet fueled his unwavering commitment, spearheading significant changes and inspiring the environmental Jewish community. Neville's legacy has paved the way for our current work, shaping and inspiring future generations his grace and determination were evident as he touched lives through advocacy, inviting others to join his cause. We are forever grateful for Neville's powerful impact and unwavering commitment to create positive change, reminding us of the profound influence that one person can have. Never will be greatly missed, as also will Clive Roth. I don't, Roth, I don't know if you've seen the obituary in the um, Jewish Chronicle, but he, he, he really was a remarkable, remarkable man. Um, and he, he, represented, he represented Norwich. His life story is here. It's quite fascinating. He, he included the things he did. He included, he bought a gold mine. He traveled to the Ar Arctic Circle and Uzbekistan. And he played a key role in the story of medieval bones, which were discovered in 2004 uh, under a shopping centre in Norwich. And he was certainly vindicated because recent uh, DNA testing has shown that these were the bones of Ashkenazi uh, Jews. And he made sure uh, that the bones were re re reburied. And he really was um, a trailblazer for the board, the board of Deputies. And here's someone who is also going to be greatly missed as well as being the president of the Norwich Hebrew congregation. So we are very unlucky to have lost two such important people as Neville and Clive. May their memories be for a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Very appreciated. And a Rafua Shalema, Rabbi Morris Michaels, very active rabbi in our community. We wish him a refuish Salema. He's been very unwell, and I can only hope that he he's on the mend. So I'm looking at Paul Hart. Yes. Good. I'm really really relieved he's to him. <laughs> very good. Okay, that's that's a very good that's a very good sign. So refuel Shalema to him. I've got to start the the president's statement with saying what an honour and a privilege it was to attend. The king's coronation. It was, it was incredible to play such a small part in history. To be, to be in the, to be in that room, and the fact that our faith and other faiths were so honoured. I was in what's called the North Precept, a couple of rows behind the Duke of Westminster. It was a most amazing place to sit, and when their Majesties were crowned in their chairs of state, I had a perfect view. I will never forget the view. I'm proud of everyone in the Jewish community who's played their part. The music, I don't know if you know Debbie Wiseman, she composed three pieces. It was wonderful to, to hear the choir. It was the most diverse coronation that I think could be possible with representatives from, from all faiths and right across society, all, all different walks of life. And the concert was also amazing that we were able to be to be part of this and the King has consistently given the message that he is a King for all faiths and none he's really set the right the right tone he absolutely in my view means this and that we should be very, very uh, lucky that he, he is there. 
for all of us. And of course, he was there in 2019. We had a fantastic event for the Jewish community at Buckingham Palace. So I think I just had to say that was so, so very, very special. So thank you. Thank you for listening to me about that. And we had a wonderful communal event during the week at Bevis Marks with the SP community also to honour the coronation, the king there. It was a real privilege to be with the community. It was the most beautiful evening. And it's wonderful when we can all come together in this way. We see the very best of our community. And that's something also that's very, very special. So I've covered some of the um, key issues in the president's statement. We did, of course, speak not long ago. I can see Joey's hands up and Joe Millis. You can both get to see who wants to come to the microphone first. And I can also see, I can also see um, David coming from from Leicester. And I do, I do want to say, deputies, we tried to see if we could get today having a meeting in Leicester. And I'm really looking for help from the regional communities as well, because unfortunately only nine people from the region said they would make the journey to Leicester. And I know in some ways it's more easy to London, but it's there not. were only 20, well, David will tell us no doubt in a minute, in a minute, but there were only 20 people. And I think we have to all try to want to be supportive to the concept of trying to have a couple of our meetings outside London, maybe with more forward planning, we'll be able, we'll be able to do this. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow in relation to, uh, to the Guardian and our response to the issues around uh, Diane Abbott were absolutely very uh, clear. Uh, we absolutely confirmed that what she had said uh, against uh, Jewish people and, and travellers was absolutely uh, disgraceful and that situation I hope uh, will be dealt we will absolutely be dealt with I'm going to let the deputies have the time um, I can see I'm just doing a quick count one two three four five I've got six online three people standing up and just to say because I want to give our new speakers um, every chance uh, of speaking and we are starting with the new speakers at 13.45, and they are going to be Michael Helfgott, uh, Jess Baker, Owen Power, and Sam Smith. So just telling you what's coming up again. I think David's keen to speak first, and so the clock will go on for two minutes. Thank Can you. Can I, before the clock does start... No, I'm sorry, David, the clock starts Well, I everybody. would first like to have the Thank opportunity... Thank you. The clock to... starts, please. Come on, be fair. The clock starts for everyone. Well, I'm going to steal one minute of... Uh, no, I'm time. really sorry. Please, everyone has to. Well, be I would firstly like to same. congratulate you, Marie, and members of the board and the, and the chief rabbi's office regarding the king's coronation, including the attendance and especially the participation. Exposure in the press, including the congratulatory adverts in the Jewish and secular press, was very special and much appreciated. And a special mention must go to Baroness Julia Moran on her very special duties during the ceremony, which, because of Shabbat, I'm yet to see in full. I will be sending my own mazel tov to her. I would like to address the extreme disappointment, a huge understatement, in being informed that the plenary in Leicester has been cancelled, partly due to its financial cost and partly because of a poor response from deputies. I think you all should be ashamed of yourselves, some of you. It would be very interesting to find out how many deputies from London were actually prepared to make an effort and come and see what we do regionally. 12. 12. 12. 12. Okay. That's 12 more than nil and especially to visit our new £1.7 million visitor centre with our ambassadors ready and prepared to give guided tours. It's techni technologically on a par with what we have here in this museum. If I can catch a train and be in London, and I'm telling you that I've done it for over 12 years, eight or nine times a year, there should be no excuse for deputies not making the effort to come to Leicester. Even, even more disappointing, Marie, was that no one had the courtesy, I would have to put guts, on the top table to phone me and let me know what was going on. And it was left to Sarah Radovan, who has spent many hundreds of hours together with me, making inquiries and arrangements. This has been a total, total waste of our time and effectively money. 
Unfortunately, my gut feeling is now that this was never going to go ahead after the cancellation of the regional weekend, and it should have been communicated. How much does having regional meetings really mean to the board? And this can not, not really, really be measured in monetary terms. It's obviously nothing. Some of these actions will undoubtedly reflect badly on the board, as my dealings with the Leicester University were undertaken as a special favour due to the Jewish nature of this event and my father Vashalom's connection with it until his recent Thank you. has now got to happen. Thank you, David. I, can, I've can, got much more to say. I'm really, in, really in, really in, sorry. in particular, Marie, with all due respect. Can we not I have think... raised voices, please? Nobody should be like this. Okay, but I also there's... want to say in defence of the board, we were all looking forward to the regional really weekend and we spent a long time organising it. And last minute we were told there couldn't be kosher food. And that's why it didn't proceed. Not, we that, weren't told till correct. right at the end. And we tried to have uh, a Sunday for a meeting in Leicester and not enough people wanted to come. And I am sorry about that because it's not right. And I've noticed at the Birmingham regional weekend that we had before and one at Manchester, very few, unfortunately, not as many regional deputies come to regional meetings and we do need to have more. And it is upsetting. I, I agree. I am in agreement. We should all make the special effort because we probably don't all realize individually how much it means to somebody to go to their community. And I spend a long time traveling to people's communities. And I, I think that you should all see how upset David is and that you, we could all do something to, to show some support and later in the year with a bit more notice so that people now understand the impact of it, we'll send out another doodle poll and try to see that we've got to have reasonable people coming because it does also cost a lot of money, but there's no reason why people now know how important it is that people should want to make the effort. Can I just want to add one thing, please? And that is that we've got roughly 50, 50 people in the room. Mm. And before lockdown, there was 150, maybe 200 mm. delegates in the room. I think that with all due respect, this Zoom effect is dramatically reducing the quality of the meetings. We used to have um, workshops which were brilliant. We used to have lots of networking. It's, it's just, I think it's destroying the board personally. And I think that the quicker we get rid of it, the better. People have got different views because there are a lot of people that can't manage to come to meetings. Um, and it also is an inclusive thing, but the pandemic's had a, a big impact. On, on how people even go to work or not go to work anymore. It really, it really has. But in-person meetings are definitely to be encouraged. But I also want to be able to let people maybe with children or old people or people that live a long way also to be able to now come to, to meetings. There has to be a good, a good compromise. So we've got a lot of people. So we are not gonna let the new speakers uh, lose out. So I'm going to take one person online, one person in the room. And if you've spoken a couple of times before, Fiona, I'm very sorry, I'm not likely to call you because it's not fair. I want to try, I want to try and call people uh, that haven't spoken before. So can I start with Susan Pascoe, please, online. Are you there, Susan? Yes, yes, I'm there. Thank you very much. Marie, um, I wanted to raise the issue of yesterday's anti-Israel rally in London, supported by the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, which was tended by thousands of people, with lots of different types of banners comparing Israel and Nazi Germany, Zionism is racism, end Zionism, signs and chanting of from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, calls for another intifada. This all breaches, as we know, the Ara definition of anti-Semitism, incites racial hatred, unfortunately increases anti-Semitism. These rallies cross the line as to what is acceptable. And I wanted to ask, should the Board of Deputies be meeting with the police? And what do you think the Board of Deputies should, should be doing? Thank you. No, thank you. It is entirely relevant uh, question. In fact, uh, last uh, week, I had a meeting with Yvette Cooper, the Shadow Home Secretary, and this very uh, this very issue was raised in the in the strongest terms with her. And we are going to meet very shortly, Sir Mark Rowley. So I totally uh, agree with you. These these rallies are 
are a real concern and it's something that we will continue to to take up and we will report back to you absolutely agreed thank you um jerry lewis and then online um could um penina get ready to speak after jerry lewis thank you jerry lewis i'm the synagogue madam president and deputies number one i wanted to congratulate one deputy who has done amazing job and that's state jeremy Michelson, the chair of the regional council he has a superb letter in the jewish telegraph and i want to ask whether you madam president are aware of two things which he wrote with regards to something called the NJA. He wrote about the NJA being formed, that this was wrong in principle to set it up, and in practice, successionists merely hand victory to their opponents and admit they've lost the, the uh, argument. He goes on to say, that the creation of the NJA is a serious mistake that could be used by extremists, particularly here on the left. I'd like to hear your views on this. We haven't heard anything said about them in recent months, but we should denigrate an organisation which is, as he pointed out in his letter, trying to split the community. But second of all, <laughs> ah, second of all, could I please ask or are you aware, as they ask in Parliament, that um, with reference to the broadcast about Christians in Jerusalem, there have been complaints by some people saying that that would create anti-Semitism in our community, wider community. Could I just make you aware, Madam President, that the one good thing that Yolan Nell did do is to ignore the major story that emerged from that weekend which was, unfortunately, that Haredi Jews were spitting at Christians on that weekend. She chose not to report it. Other people did report it. So we've got to be very careful when we start criticising some of the, stir the reports that we see. Finally, <coughs> Guardian. Sorry, thank Can you. Can you just tell us what you're going to say thank to the you. Guardian? Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you, Jerry. Um, I haven't seen the particular article that's uh, been been written, but I, I, I'd rather really be positive and concentrate on all the good work that the Board of Deputies does rather than to denigrate other people. And I think we should congratulate ourselves. And we are doing that's right. We're doing we're doing we're doing a huge amount of work. It's not really my my style to to criticize other um, organizations. Um, if there is spitting or violence by anybody in our community, then that is obviously unacceptable. It needs to be called out. And we'll let you know with the uh, Guardian meeting what happens when we've seen Catherine, Catherine Viner. But she's very, very clear from our community that we are deeply unhappy. And it's not, it's not good enough to be um, saying sorry to the community. We want to know what's going to happen next. We want to make sure that there's not going to be any any repeat so i think we'll have to wait to have the meeting but the fact that she agreed to have the meeting is a good is a good start and she realizes the offense and huge upset that has been called uh, as a result of this and the board of deputies acted very very swiftly so i think that we should we should now wait and see what happens after the meeting Thank you. So next on online, Penina Serrano, please say your name and constituency. Thank you. And then it will be Jo Millis in um, the room. Um, Penina Serrano, Beth Shalom, Reform Cambridge. Um, Madam President, firstly, I'd like to greatly thank you and the honorary officers and the deputies for your continuous work in building bridges and speaking out to challenge racism and hate crime. Thank you very much for supporting me concerning Roger Waters. And on the subject of racism, thank you for speaking up to Diane Abbott about her abhorrent letter suggesting Jews don't suffer racism. And it's on that note that I'd like to challenge some of the people here on uh, considering carefully not wanting the word Jewish to appear on you know, public documents like 
census, equal opportunity forms, city council forms and, and voting forms and so on. And I can understand why people are worried about this, but nevertheless, there are many of us who don't feel comfortable simply ticking uh, just white, black or other. Um, if indeed we, we do suffer racism and we make a point of this, surely we should uh, be both brave and wise in taking steps to reinstate Jewish on these forms and documentations. And it has been argued that to have the religion Judaism is, is not enough, as very clearly there are many uh, people born Jewish who for one reason or another don't practice Judaism as a religion, but remain very spiritual and very much Jewish people. So that, that was my uh, comment. Oh, I've got a few minutes left. So I also wanted to add, um, some people can't quite make it to London at the moment. And I'm really grateful that we've got the option of Zoom. And I also wanted to say that when we do make it back to uh, London, some of them are quieter, more gentle uh, people would appreciate uh, people who are present if they don't stomp around and, 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 and raise their voice and, and speak over the time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, of course, Jews absolutely do suffer racism, which is one of the key issues that unfortunately we have to have to deal with on an ongoing uh, basis. I agree that the census should have ethnicity. We've discussed this before. Um, it is a matter that the divisions are dealing with for the next survey. I know there are ongoing discussions with the EHRC, the Office for National uh, statistics and there are discussions um, still uh, in the defence division. If I could just ask perhaps in the room, um, it's, it's just a bit distracting if we could um, have less speaking, thank you, that's very much. Um, so this is something that I, is very important and I think Jews have got the right to choose ethnicity and they should be able to do so and that's something that the Board of Deputies has raised uh, before. And on, on the subject of ethnicity, I want to remind everybody here that following the racist murder of George Floyd, it was the Board of Deputies, and Phil Rosenberg, of course, was heavily involved in this, that set up the commission chaired uh, very, very uh, ably. Um, and we have looked right across our community as to how Jews of colour uh, uh, are treated and included. And this follow up is very, very important. So I think that we've all got to play our part, but these, these issues about ethnicity and the survey have certainly not been forgotten. Thank you. So in the room, Joe Millis. Joe Millis probably reformed in the house. Um, in the house. <laughs> there has been a vast improvement on divisional reports. They are far more detailed far more engaging and we know a lot more now than we did i can remember of what's going on in the boards in the division beg your pardon however there is one thing that i found quite difficult to understand in the executive report and that was number one it said there merely that a motion had been dismissed or will not be considered because of the wording. Yeah. Could we understand or could we be told, please, what the motion was about? And could we also, could I also ask that in executive reports, there are more details, just like in the other divisional reports that we get now? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if that wasn't uh, clearly reported. It wasn't actually a motion. It was like a very long uh, word, rambling, long uh, wording. So uh, to be a motion, a motion has to be a motion. So the person who did that was was told that that doesn't look like a motion. So perhaps that should have been made a bit clearer. So I, I apologize. I apologize that for that. But if motions are going to be brought, there has to be sufficient um, clarity to do so. People can give their opinion for pages and pages, but that's still uh, not a motion. But thank you, thank you. Uh, online, someone who doesn't usually speak, uh, Lawrence Jacobson. And then Jeremy Michelson in the room. Lawrence. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Lawrence Jacobson, Wimbledon District Synagogue. Now I have a question together with some comments to make. In the aftermath of the Home Secretary's rebuke, should the BOD be having any further involvement in the illegal migration bill? In that regard, I wish to share with the board my deep-seated concerns about whether it is appropriate for the board to be associated in any way with this bill. Firstly, Clause 3B of the board's constitution suggests that on national issues, the board should first consider as a threshold issue whether it is necessary to intervene. When the board becomes involved, it shines a spotlight on the Jewish and the entire Jewish community with all its attendant uh, consequences, positive and negative. As there is no discernible Jewish issue present here, it is unclear why it is, it is necessary to become engaged. Secondly, as the board is not proposing any constructive alternative measures to the provisions in the bill, it poses a further question as to why the board's participation is necessary in such a nationally divisive issue. Thirdly, the board's intervention in any event appears to lack balance. There appears to be no adequate regard to the views of our fellow Jews and non-Jewish citizens who take an opposite view for objectively plausible reasons. Why do their views not count with the board? Fourthly, turning now to those seeking asylum in accordance with the rules and in an ordered manner, has the board's intervention also been fair to them? The current message could be construed to suggest that queue jumping and illegal entry are preferable to a lawful application. So finally, so while it is right that individual members- Thank you, four seconds. Uh, Intervention of the board can take roles as activists. The board, on the other hand, is constrained by the terms of its constitution and its abiding duty to protect the whole Jewish community in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look, I respect your opinion. The board is a very uh, diverse uh, place. The treatment of refugees is a humanitarian uh, issue, and we know that our community is full of care and compassion. We are most of us descended from refugees. We know it's a very sensitive um, issue. We also know that in the land of Egypt, we were strangers and we should love the stranger. I think other faiths, for example, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, during the week also expressed his concern about the treatment of refugees. And Jews are kind and compassionate. And that is, in my view, not a political statement to show love love for people that are in need is something to be uh, commended. I, I haven't had many people suggest that that was was wrong, but everybody is entitled to, to their own to their own opinion. But thank you very much for that. And also, to, thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Um, and of course, it was discussed um, at the board. It's not just the president making a statement. We've got policies, we've got procedures. And this is something shared by the honorary officer team. We are we are caring and compassionate as as a community. We're not intervening in in relation to particular aspects of the drafting or the legislation. We've ex expressed concern about the treatment of human human beings on their journey. Thank you, Jeremy Michelson. Jeremy Michelson, Manchester Great New and Central Synagogue. Really, just first of all, to thank Jerry for his very very kind words. Uh, about my letter, letter which was actually sent to the honorary officer so they would know what was going in. Just to put it in, in context so you know why I mentioned the NJA, there were a number of hostile letters in the Jewish Telegraph in the previous weeks and one or two saying, you know, it, it's better now that we support the NJA. And at that point, I thought we've got to do something here. And that's why in a long letter which defended the board on other issues, like for example, uh, issues about Israel, etc. Um, I felt it was necessary to mention the NJA and the fact that they, you know, that to the um, multiplicity of uh, organisations are used by the left, in particular, but uh, uh, to insinuate their own sort of bogus organisation as an equally uh, uh, representative body, uh, and to try and say, well, that, and that's the one we're going to deal with. So that's why I did it. 
uh, and that normally I would agree with Marie that you know one doesn't mention the opposition because uh, it actually gives them more publicity. But in this particular case, I felt it was necessary to do so. Thank you. Can I can I just add? I'm not thinking of it in terms of opposition because the Board of Deputies is a democratic representative body, representative of many uh, communities, as opposed to an individual. Uh, project. So I think it's important to remember our democratic representative uh, status and we have real uh, people in the uh, community. So online, online, please, could I, um, could I get David to, Gurevich to be ready after uh, Bruce so that you, you come next, you don't often talk. Bruce. Yes, Bruce Greenberg for the Northampton Jewish Community, uh, Madam President. Marie, uh, I'm still fascinated with the, the whole thing about the uh, coronation. And on the day, did you have a chance uh, to speak with Chief Rabbi Mervis or uh, Baroness, I believe that's the correct title, of uh, uh, Jillian Marin, who uh, once upon a time back in the day was once of us here at Board of Deputies meetings. Did you speak to either the Chief Rabbi or Jillian? And what were their thoughts about uh, the day? Thank you. I was one row behind uh, the Chief Rabbi, so I certainly spoke to him and Rabbi Dweck. In fact, on the Friday night, I had dinner uh, with, with Rabbi Dweck and Rabbi, Rabbi Epstein. I certainly saw Gillian, I can, I can share with you. We, 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 had, a good, we had a very, very uh, good chat. I saw some other politicians as well coming in. And opposite me on the other side, I saw President Herzog and his wife. So I even had some time. So I walked around and I said to him, Shabbat Shalom, which I thought was a really special thing to be able to do in Westminster Abbey. There were lots of friends that, that we saw on the day. It was, it was just too amazing, but thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David online, please. And then Joel Rosen, thank you, David. And then Tess, get ready to warm up. You'll be next online. Okay, David. Thank you. Can you hear me? Um, David Gurevich, Birmingham Progressive Synagogue. Um, I just w wish to raise the issue about a colleague and friend of mine from Birmingham Progressive Synagogue, Michael Kretzmer, who's made a film called J'accuse, which you may or may not have heard of recounting the traumas to the Lithuanian community, and in particular to Plomien, a place where his family came from in Lithuania regarding a man called Janos Norieka, who has statues and other paraphernalia in Lithuania, and they, as a country, exonerate and idolize this person who has caused huge trauma to the Jewish community, along with other Lithuanians uh, during the war. And I just wondered whether the, <clears throat> board of, the deputy, Board of Deputies has taken this on board and has been involved in any form of in lobbying of the European Parliament and of Lithuanian government regarding the situation. And it's not only unique to Lithuania, but also to Latvia and to other countries in Middle Europe um, who also have statues of those persons who were involved in uh, terrible traumas in the war. So I would ask you uh, to take the film Jacques on board. It has been shown at JY3, I understand, and it's had wide showings in the States, San Diego, um, Los Angeles, Houston, Boston, uh, et cetera, and also in Australia and in South Africa. Uh, I'd be grateful for your opinion. Thank, Thank you. you. I know you can't see in the room, but I'm going to let somebody who really knows what he's talking about and, uh, uh, to, to, to respond to that. Brian Bloom, Ajax, would you, would you like to respond? Yes, I would. Thank you, Madam Rubis, President. Um, I'm Litvak. All four of my grandparents were Litvaks. We lost a huge amount of our family murdered by the Lithuanians, not the Germans. I don't call them Nazis, incidentally, they're Ger they were Germans. And my family were murdered by the Lithuanians. Nobody has been held to task for that. No Lithuanian has ever been put on trial. No Lithuanian has ever been accused of by their own government. In this particular moment, we are talking with the International Division and David. We're going to be meeting up with the Lithuanian ambassador. And it is my hope and wish that Jacques is actually filmed and made available to all of the new deputies. 
the first part of the film actually tells the story of Plunja, where my family came from. And many of the pictures on that film are possibly my family. I don't know. The records were destroyed afterwards. But 97% of Lithuanian Jews is the highest percentage of any other community in the Holocaust were murdered within a two week period in July 1941. So thank you for the question. And I'm calling on David, please, please, please let us address this and see the ambassador. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I hope David on online that 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 her, Brian Bloom from Ajax. Everyone should know Brian. He does the most <laughs> amazing things for Ajax. You're going to have can to be I, can very I just say quick. One more thing, if I may. May I ask any deputy that has any Litvak connection, please contact me, and I will pass on the information. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Right, Joel. Joel Rosen. Thank you. Thank you, Joel Rose and UJS. I'll be brief. Um, I just wanted, to, uh, in light of an earlier conversation, to really commend the stance that you've taken and the board has taken in terms of um, the government's uh, approach to, to migration and to refugees and asylum. Uh, it's an issue that's of immense concern to Jewish students. It comes up time and time again at our conference. And I was particularly proud of, of the board's stance. It gave voice to many Jewish students who are incredibly alarmed uh, at the uh, rhetoric and action we're seeing from this government, you know, the, the, the language of, of invaders, uh, that kind of dehumanizing uh, rhetoric, which is obviously completely unacceptable. And we as a community should be mindful of our own history um, and, and should respond very robustly uh, to, to the dehumanization of migrants and to uh, the, the breaches of international law uh, in relation to migration and asylum. So can I commend the start to the board's take on that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tess is online, then Ruth Hart, and then I'm going to come back to James Harris. Tess. It was, the, it was an absolute pleasure um, to attend the last in-person plenary. I was so heartened to see the cross-denominational de denominational support for the motion in support of um, uh, those protesting against extremism in the Israeli government. Um, and we've seen a lot of these protests, including in the UK. So, for example, Benjamin Netanyahu's visit to London. And it was great to see so many leading British Jewish communal figures speaking at these protests, um, offering the Israeli community in the UK our support. So I'd like to know what support the board of deputies has given the Israeli community in the UK um, in regards to this. Thank you. We had a fantastic event in relation to Israel at JW3. We've discussed the issues as a community but it's not the board of deputies place if you're suggesting that we are um, attending uh, rallies we're very clear that we've given statements where they're needed to and we hope that the position in israel is going to be resolved and we really have expressed our our concerns so thank you jess uh, ruth ruth hart former reformed synagogue now, with the best will in the world, and I'm sure everybody here is a good woman or a good man, we want to do our best, um, not only for our own community, but for those who are less, less fortunate, um, whatever their faith, ethnicity, national origin. Sometimes we, we, we confuse two different things. We confuse refugees with economic migrants, and everyone has the right to a, a better life, but that's not the same as being a refugee. It's not the same as fleeing persecution, and, and it's also worth remembering that, um, um, you, know, you know, unlike our ancestors, many people continuing to uh, Europe nowadays, they have a choice of safe countries they can go to, and at the moment, the only people I see being monstered or dehumanised are, are people like myself or Mr Jacobson for dissenting. Thank you. Thank you. Look, <laughs> thank you. Um, could we could we move? I think I said James Harris to be online, and then um, 
Gid Smith, you don't speak often as well. Can you be can you be ready to follow? And I have to finish at quarter two because we've got the new new speakers. James um, Harris. Thanks, Marie. I just have a few comments and questions. First, I want to commend you um, for representing our community uh, so diligently at the coronation and, and more broadly on, on a national level. Um, second, I, I totally agree with Joe Minnis that in all minutes, generally for the divisions, the detail is really considerably improved. So I want to thank all the HOs for that. And I, I guess uh, sort of on the flip side, though, I did just want to to ask if we could understand the topic of this this non motion that you mentioned, um, not not the wording specifically, but just so we know roughly what the topic was. I think that would be helpful. <laughs> now, since I've been here this, uh, today, I've learned something. I did not know that under thirty five who wanted to become representatives to the Board of Deputies could come from their congregations with no charge whatsoever. Now, <clears throat> I, I pride myself on being fairly intelligent and I feel that's a little bit of information that should have come my way and could I ask the Secretariat to put us properly in the picture? Yeah, sure. And, um, <clears throat> Well, that really is all that I have of any consequence to say. Oh, you've got so much consequence. Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> and, <laughs> thank you. Um, and we, we've always had for a very long time, I don't know who instituted it, Jerry, Jerry Lewis or no, it might have been him, the under 35 <laughs> observers. Was that you, Jerry? Right, there you are. Credit where credit is due to Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. But of course, we don't want anybody to be upset, but there's very good humor in the room, thank you. Right, now what's most important to us, the future. We now have our new uh, deputies program. We've got four speakers. I want you to give a big hand. Uh, first of all, uh, to Michael Helfgott. Thank you, Yay! Please say your name and constituency, thank you. Three minutes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Madam President and fellow deputies for your kind welcome and for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Michael Helfgott. By way of background in relation to communal matters, I served as an honorary officer and co-chair of Hampstead Dennington Park Road Synagogue and have recently been involved in the setting up of the new Holocaust Memorial at the grounds in Bushy. In my working life, I'm a partner at the law firm of Taylor Wessing. I'm here as the new representative to the board for the 45 Aid Society, a charity founded in 1963 as a self-help group for those 732 teenage refugees who the Central British Fund, now the World Jewish Relief, brought to England just after the war. You may know this group by the name of the boys, although it did include some girls whose story was retold by Sir Martin Gilbert in his 1996 book, The Boys Triumph Over Adversity. And again, in, in the BBC document, docudrama, The Windermere Children. As it turned out, the boys through the 45 Aid Society not only helped each other, but they did a great deal to assist the wider world through their charitable endeavors. My father, Ben Helfgott, rep represented the society at the board for nearly 40 years, he chaired the board's Yad Vashem committee and worked closely with each successive president, including, including very happily Marie, and so many other wonderful board, board deputies and, and staff members to ensure cross-communal support on issues relating to Holocaust remembrance and in the teaching and, and in teaching the importance of building a tolerant society. The role of the Board of Deputies in Holocaust education, memorialization and commemoration in this country has been a very significant one and something we as a group should be very right and be rightly proud of. It is a huge privilege for me to be able as representative of the 45 Aid Society to continue in the steps of my father and I look forward to work working with each of you over the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Jess Baker, welcome to the stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say I am a lady and I'm very happy to be here, but I am also Yay! a lady. But I also, it's 
should be said, I was a UJS deputy for the last four years, and quite a lot of the time throughout that period, I was a young woman who didn't feel comfortable getting up here and talking, and that is, despite the fact we are represented here and the women up here, this is a largely male gathering, and it can be an uncomfortable place to get up and speak, even though I am glad that I've been supported at points in order to do that. Um, so yes, I am. I was UJS deputy for four years, and I didn't engage as much as I would want to. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to reintroduce myself. Um, during that time, I was busy. I was volunteering and campaigning on student mental health, volunteering in kitchens in Calais, and most importantly, and the thing I'm proudest of, I was running this, the progressive Jewish student Minyan at Leeds campus, uh, where we built a community to be proud of. I'd really like to echo the words of Joel um, in that my experiences were hugely positive on campus and that the issues that arose were dealt with amazingly both by the university and through UJS. Um, I remain passionate and also concerned about the needs of progressive Jewish students on campus. Um, Orthodox and traditional students are well supported by various organisations and much more work is needed to support progressive students who may struggle to fit into the events mm. provided for them. Now that I've graduated, I'm excited to be able to rejoin the board with more capacity to get involved on behalf of Arzenu, who represent the rights of progressive Jews across the world and in Israel. It's a position I was motivated to take up by recent threats to those rights in Israel. I'm looking forward to working more closely with all of you and particularly getting re-involved with the Social Action Committee. In my day job, I'm a project officer for an international development organisation, um, working in international conflict and peace building. I'm particularly passionate about the way in which Jews in the humanitarian and development industry can bring the values of Tikkun Olam to our professional work and would certainly be happy to discuss this with individuals or in relation to the board's work, um, especially with Marie's most recent visit to Calais. Um, I'm also, excitingly, the co-chair of programming for Lamud this year. So I'm enjoying currently many thorough conversations about what an inspiring and varied Lamud program could look like, but I'd love to talk to more of you about this and would love to hear about sessions you'd like to run, sessions you'd like to see. Um, please approach me um, over this year as we build a really interesting program. I look forward to seeing many of you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can hear how well that was received. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, then online, Owen Power, are you there? Yes. He's there. Yeah. The yes. Floor is it's o Owen Power, deputy for York Liberal Jewish Community, and a very good afternoon from the north. York Liberal Jewish Community was founded in 2014 and now has 42 members, 27 junior members, 13 friends, 14 associate members, and four students. Services are held in a York City Centre venue, quite close to, to, to Clifford Tower, which has significance historically for the Jews returning to York. The community is very active in interfaith work and in social action, doing a lot of work to combat food poverty. Members are regularly invited to represent the Jewish community at civic events and at services in York Minster. Some of you might know I am deaf and gay. It can be quite challenging bringing my identities to sit comfortably together Sometimes it can be difficult to be Jewish in the LGBTQ community because of anti-Semitism, and it is not always easy to be gay in some Jewish settings, and it is never easy to be deaf in any community. However, I am proud to be a deputy. The board has made great progress in recent years on inclusion. I love the President's questions as it's a great opportunity to raise issues. Madam President, I'm delighted with all your responses to my questions so far 
particularly your encouragement for me to facilitate the setting up of a group for deputies with disabilities, including hidden disabilities. I will shortly be sending out an email to invite disabled deputies to contact me that we can set up an information meeting on Zoom. And I know I can rely on the regional manager for her support as she's a rock to give me any advice that I might yeah. need. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You've, you've got a massive applause, lots of waving of hands. We're very proud to have you, Owen. And I think it is very important if people have disabilities that we do have this discussion. Some people have disabilities that, that are hidden. Um, I have a disability that's hidden. I've only got one vocal cord and I have to speak from, from the stomach. So even I, have, even I have a disability, but it's not something that you probably can see or hopefully hopefully hear, but sometimes, sometimes you might. So it's good to have that discussion and to be able to, to talk about it. And Owen, congratulations on your work. It's very, very important. And I've also been um, to um, Clifford's Tower very recently. And of course it is a very, was a very difficult place for Jews because of the massacre in 1190. And I'm so pleased that there is a community there. Thank you for all the work that you're, you're doing. Thank you, well done, thank you. Next up, Sam Smith, welcome. Thank you, Madam President, for this opportunity to introduce myself and my organization. I'm Sam Smith, and I'm the deputy for the Federation of Zionist Youth. To briefly introduce myself, I'm in my first year at the University of Bristol, which I believe makes me, if not the youngest deputy at this moment, at least one of. Whilst this is my first position in our community, I come from a family where volunteering for the community is commonplace. Multiple members of my extended family have served as deputies, and both of my presidents have been elected chair of our synagogue. I'm hopeful that many people in this room are aware of FZY, but for those who are not, we're the oldest Jewish youth movement in this community, having been founded before the First World War and are also the largest. Over 40% of the kids taking part in Israel tour this summer will do so with us, and around 1,000 people will be involved in our summer activities in total. FZY is unique among the youth movements in, in that it is seen as the one that is not ideological, but for a couple of minutes I would like to explain why that is not the case. If I was to ask someone familiar with the movement to some of the ideologies in one word, it would go something like this. Abonim is socialist, RSY is reform, and Akira is religious. But FZY, the one word answer I'd get is pluralist. FZY is the only major pluralist place for the Jewish youth of today. What is pluralism? This question is asked every year in FZY, and for most people the response is the same. FZY being, being a pluralist Jewish and Zionist youth movement means having three services on Shabbat, orthodox, reform, and non-religious, and is used to quote a foremost care as a marketing gimmick to make sure that we can attract children from across the community. And I can attest to this, having walked in on some of my chanachim, wrapping to fill in on very same mornings as I've been leading sessions on Judaism where some of the other kids could not answer basic questions about our religion. This experience is, in my opinion, unique to FZY and means that we offer a welcoming framework to all. However, that is not all that pluralism is. Pluralism is a framework for us to view Judaism and Zionism and to develop our own identities within it. It's a framework that fosters the best environment possible to achieve our personal visions of Judaism and Zionism. We can't act like liberal Judaism doesn't exist or that Orthodox is the only proper way to do it. We believe that you must invite, understand and celebrate everything within the collective of Judaism and Zionism for the collective to maximize its potential. But what does this mean in practice? For me, it means listening to other perspectives to my own, but not only listening. It means accepting, it means understanding and it means being proud of the fact that other perspectives exist. Without being able to do this, there is no unity as the Jewish people. And when terrorists drive at pedestrians, open fire on bars and spray bullets, bullets at cars just because Jews are there, and that's before talking about the hundreds of rockets fired at the Jewish state in the past few days, it's important for us Jews to show unity. I like to joke that the biggest, biggest mistake made by the now former professor at my university during his anti-Semitic tirade was to assume that the community was, incap was capable of working together. Thankfully, we are capable of this. We answered the call from Rabbi Leo D to display the Israeli flag, and within this organization, we found compromise and came together. In my very first meeting, I listened to so many people speak about how they felt they couldn't support something, but eventually could with changes. It was a situation where those who never usually agreed with each other came together to do so. An important lesson and one that we tried to teach at FZY. Thank you for listening. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Well done. That's really appreciated. And I shall share a little secret with you, deputies. Uh, Michael was the chairman of FZY in 1988. <laughs> 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 no, well, well, well done. In, well done indeed. And um, I did go to the, the shiva for Rabbi Rabbi Dean. He, he was a very, he is a very, very courageous, courageous man. I want to thank all the new deputies for their speeches. It's a really difficult thing, thing to do. And the, the speaker program, I want to thank Rob Sassoon uh, and Marilyn Keane. They've really worked hard on this. And I really, let's give them a clap. And it's wonderful to have so many diverse views. It's also really good to come together. It's been a very positive meeting, lots of humor, lots of clapping, lots of issues that we've discussed. There's always more that we can do. We all know that, but as a community, I think we should be proud. And it was incredible that we were honored by the King. I think it's reflected uh, very well on our community. So I want to thank everybody for everything that they are doing. And I look forward to seeing you next meeting uh, online. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that you're, you're not in the room for our final closing words, but perhaps you could come offline, give everybody a wave uh, or something like that so that we can say goodbye together. That would be really lovely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if he left it, if he left it there.